Alright guys, to get those arms off, you're going to need a 3 quarter inch socket or 19 millimeter socket to get the nut off. And then you're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen key to get the Allen uh, bolt out. Once you have those loose, the arm will pretty much just slide right out. Then at that point, you're going to clean the shaft off, take all the grease off, uh, get all the dirt out of there and uh, make it ready for uh, reassembly. Um, so in my case, we're not going to be replacing the bearings today. We're going to be replacing those with uh, polyurethane bushings. Uh, so we're going to have to remove those bushings out of the beam. Uh, and in order to use that, you're going to need a slide hammer. Um, so you're going to remove this outer bushing. And then on the new um, bushing that you're putting in, you're going to grease up and pretty much just slide right in. So pay attention guys, we'll get this uh, uh, fixed up real quick here. Get these uh, rubber bushings off. You can't twist them off. The best way is to actually just take a mallet and get, give them a couple little taps on both sides and then you should be able to pull them off. Um, looks like I'll probably need a couple more taps on that one before I can actually pull it off. Yep. See, it pretty much just popped right off. So now you can get to the bearings. There it is. So I think I got the right tool for the job to pull those bearings out. Um, you got to pull them out from the inside out. What you need is a uh, slide hammer. Okay. And uh, basically, the way these things work is you just twist them, and you'll see those jaws starting to open up. And once they lock onto your bearings, then you're just going to use this and slide it back as fast as you can, and that will pop the bearings out. All right, so now that I got the passenger side arms back on with the new bushings, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the through rods in. Uh, the really easy job. Um, basically, you're just gonna slide it through that hole, and then you gotta slide it through the center hole um, where where you have the locking nut. And then once it's all the way through, you can put a uh, nut on this side, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, arms and bushings on the other side. I'll show you what we need to do with the uh, bushings on the other side. I just want to get these things in, get the uh, through rods in, and then I'll show you what needs to happen on the other side. Alright, so now that we have this nut on, uh, it comes with an Allen key, so you can just twist it on and then that'll lock it in place. Just get it about a quarter inch on, then you're just going to stick it through this outer hole. go we found the center okay so it should be poking out the other side okay I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other one Now these threads on these through rods, uh, they're both right hand threads, so you don't have to worry about uh, which side's which as far as um, left or right hand threads go. Okay, so both of those are in there now. Now we're going to go to the other side and put the, uh, like I said, the, the control arms, um, the bushings, and then we'll put that nut on the other side. Okay, so these bushings come with a... Uh, grease packet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use bearing grease in here. Um, I don't think there's any issue with it, um, but I'm going to use bearing grease on it because there's already bearing grease in those holes. So figured it shouldn't affect this polyurethane. Um, so there's actually a different size 
of uh, tubing for each one. The bigger one's going to go on the bottom one. You'll you'll see how it tapers off at the bottom, and then this one is almost uh, straight. That's the smaller one that which goes on the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some uh, grease on your hand. You're going to just go ahead and coat the outside, coat the inside. Just get the whole thing nice and greased up. Okay, so now it's all greased up. Gonna go slide it over that rod. And you're just gonna push it in. It might wanna push back because uh, as you're pushing in, there, it creates air bubbles on that, that grease. Go ahead and wipe the ex extra grease off. Okay, and you can use that on the next one. Now the reason why you're uh, lubing up both inside and outside is to allow the controlling arms to be able to slide into these things easy. If you don't do it, you're going to be fighting trying to get those controlling arms in. Not to mention you want some sort of uh, barrier there, uh, some sort of grease barrier. Okay, so this one is ready. Okay. Now, um, when you're putting the controlling arms on, you want to make sure the one that has the shock mount goes on the bottom. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, just so you know which one's switch, grab the one that has that extra piece hanging off the side, which is actually for the shock. Okay, so now that's all well lubed up. Let me go ahead and put that on the bottom one. Don't worry about that rod. We'll uh, feed it through. The main thing is you want it uh, started in that tube. If you don't get it started on this side, it's going to be a pain to get it in there. It's easy to line it up through the middle one, but when you get to uh, line it up to the other side, that rod tends to want to fall down and it's uh, won't slide through that easy on the other side. 